Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorials on my YouTube channel, Python for Microscopists. In this short video, I'm going to talk about evaluating your deep learning model, basically keeping track of your validation loss and accuracy and then plotting it as a function of epochs. So let me jump out of this screen and go back to our uh, spider IDE. And again, just so you know, I'm using Python 3.5.5. And again, this is because this is the only version I can use. So I, uh, you know, in order to leverage the GPU that I have here, okay, the NVIDIA GPU. And the TensorFlow version I'm using is 1.4 and 2.0.8 Keras, uh, okay? All of these only to make sure the, my GPU actually works. If you have a later uh, GPU or if you don't have a GPU and if you're working on TensorFlow 2.0 uh, and other versions, most of the stuff I'm talking about should still be very much applicable. Okay, so here is the code from our last few tutorials where I talked about classification of malarial cells using convolutional neural networks. So very simple, again, I have a folder of cell images called, uh, you know, and subfolders parasitized with 500 images of parasitized uh, uh, cells and uninfected. And similarly, I have a validation folder. So I'm storing, uh, I'm using those to augment my data set. Again, uh, please watch my previous uh, tutorials on this topic so you can be up to speed with this. In the last tutorial, I talked about callbacks. Again, we created the checkpoint. So our model gets saved every so often and early stopping so we can stop this when certain conditions are met and then again we use log csv to log the csv i mean all the parameters into a csv file so here you can quickly see our epoch number uh training accuracy loss validation accuracy and validation loss okay you can right away take this and then uh, you know convert this into a pandas data frame and then start plotting so that's i mean then you're done right uh, so that's one way. The other way is you see how we are doing model.fit generator. Uh, it, it works great and everything will be saved into our H5 file, but it's customary to actually give this a name. And typically, I don't know why, they give a name called history because it's storing all the uh, historical information as the number of epochs progress. So let's do that. And let's actually run this for 50 epochs so we have enough data points to talk about. And then let's continue the discussion. So let me go ahead and start this. I'm gonna pause this video uh, because I don't want you to obviously stare at the screen even though I have a GPU and this training is a bit uh, uh, faster than uh, usual. So let me go ahead and pause this and continue this in a, uh, uh, you know, once this is done. Well, this thing actually stopped only after five epochs apparently because the early stopping has been achieved so i think this is this is good enough let's go ahead and first of all uh let's uh, let's see what's in history right so the history is stored and if you actually type history here you see that it's an actually an object okay if you actually look at history dot history you can see that it contains some information. You see accuracy loss and validation, accuracy validation loss. In fact, let's actually give it a name. A equals to history dot history. So what do we see? Let's go to variable explorer. It's a dictionary of size four, okay? What are these four entries in this dictionary? Let's go ahead and expand this. Uh, the oh, Sorry, let's keep this right here. The four entries are accuracy, loss which is the training accuracy training loss validation accuracy and validation loss and the size is five because we only have five epochs in fact if i open up my accuracy now you can see these are the five values here so let's actually look at validation loss here okay so here is validation loss okay now as you can see the loss actually went down at this point and then uh it seems to be going up now. In fact, I should have actually, yeah, I should have actually made my patients to be like uh, 25 or 30 or something because now it's things are still changing quite a bit, right? Again, the patients is how many epochs after the minimum of validation accuracy has been found that you want to further go ahead. Okay, so. Um, I think this is not fun. So let's actually make my patients to be 30 and let me continue this to be 50 epochs so we can have a quick look at it. Again, I'll pause the video. Okay, so I had to remove our early stopping 
so I could get this thing uh, go through all the 50 epochs. And now if I look at my dictionary of history dot history, you can see that, okay, I have these four values, accuracy, loss, validation, accuracy, and validation loss. And each of this is of size 50 because we have 50 epochs. So we have all the data now. So uh, first of all, how do we evaluate? As you can see in this case, I'm actually saving my model to a H5, HDF5 uh, file. And uh, which means now I can actually go ahead and evaluate my uh, model. Again, I'm uh, in the next tutorial, let's talk about loading an existing model. But uh, because we have our final state of the model, we can now do model.evaluate, okay? I'm doing value generator because again, my input is coming from a generator, train generator. Again, please watch my tutorial on data augmentation to understand this part, okay? Uh, if you do not have generator or augmented data, then this would be just model.evaluate and then your X and Y values, okay? And then your batch size, that's it. But model.evaluate is what you need. So I'm extracting my loss and accuracy. Again, when you run model.evaluate or evaluate generator, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be reporting two values. The first one, loss, and the second one, accuracy. Because I'm inputting or providing train generator or training data as my input, I'm calling them training loss and training accuracy. Similarly, validation loss and uh, or test loss, let's say instead of we are using test, test, test loss and test accuracy, okay, for my validation data. I'm just going to print these. So let's have a quick look at this, and this should be just a single values, right, for each of this. So it's saying that my training accuracy is 94.9% and my test accuracy is 87.1%, which is okay. I mean, I still can go on for a while and then see if my test accuracy gets better, but this gives a good snapshot of how it's performing on your training data set and on your validation data set, okay? Now, if you would like to have a look at all of these values uh, and, you know, and, and plot them, you can actually add a, uh, a callback for TensorBoard and you can open it in TensorBoard, but that's a different topic altogether. So let's uh, keep things a bit simple. First of all, you can open this CSV file, uh, you know, and then uh, go ahead and plot it. Or because we already have everything stored as part of our history, right? I mean, we looked at this uh, history dot history. Let's go ahead and plot it. All I'm trying to do is, uh, first of all, let's go ahead and print the values in the history, right? So these are all the values that got stored and this correspond to your validation accuracy and uh, uh, so on. And let's go ahead and plot it, <clears throat> excuse me, from matplotlib import pyplot as plt. So we can go ahead and plot these values. So, and now I'm just going to plot loss and validation loss, or training loss and validation loss, that's it. Okay, and just using our regular pyplot. So there you go. And my test or validation is still jumping up and down. This is so unstable. Yeah, this is jumping up and down. Maybe more epochs uh, uh, here, or maybe more, you know, uh, of this uh, validation data set. Okay, so here uh, is how you can actually evaluate the performance. And again, I'm not elaborating on why these things are happening. Again, there are many reasons why these things are happening. So there's no point in focusing on this specific example, but uh, I suspect even if I increase my number of epochs, it's still going to do pretty much the same thing in here, uh, 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 right here. So it doesn't seem to be converging very well. So maybe I need to tune some of these other parameters, okay, uh, up here. So I hope you found this tutorial to be useful. And again, uh, please go ahead and uh, uh, work on your own data set and see if you could by tuning any of these parameters, whether it is batch size. Batch size also has an effect, by the way, on how you do it, right? I mean, if the batch size is too large, there is one effect. If the batch size is too small, then you're not, uh, you know, then you're not kind of generalizing it enough. So uh, again, there are a lot of parameters that you need to tune to get things right but uh, I'll let you work on your own data set so you can get your own experiences on this. So thank you very much. And again, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel.